This is Aroostook County, Maine, one of the most northern places in all of the U.S., and home to a lot of Bigfoot sightings. And after discovering this book, I knew I had no choice but to go investigate. And after a six-hour drive, and a lot of thinking about whether or not Bigfoot might be real, you see that, ladies and gents? That's a Sasquatch right there! I had arrived in Presque Isle, Aroostook County. Actually, I got here last night. If you watched last week's video, you know that. If not, hey, I just got here just now. And we're less than an hour from multiple locations where Bigfoot has been spotted. With 50 hours to figure out whether or not Bigfoot might be real, I figured the best place to start would be right here. Here's the plan of action. First, we're gonna go to Walmart. After Walmart, we're gonna head a little bit closer to Sherman, Maine, where our cabin is for the night. On the way there, I say we stop in a couple more locations and see if we can get any evidence or stories from anybody. The goal of day one is to get the info we need to be able to hunt Bigfoot on day two. Walmart! Hi. We're here! Shout out the Girl Scouts for literally the greatest clip ever to appear on YouTube ever. I mean, seriously, did you see the peeps cost? Costume. <laughs> Bigfoot is real. I just found him. We're gonna have to settle for instant coffee, unfortunately. But other than buying coffee to fuel my addiction, the real reason why we're here is this. You guys believe in Bigfoot? Bigfoot? Yeah. yeah. Do you have any stories? No. Do you guys believe in Bigfoot? <laughs> Do you guys believe in Bigfoot at all? No. I believe in Bigfoot. Awesome. That gives me hope. Do you believe in Bigfoot? No. Do you believe in Bigfoot? I believe in a lot of things. Do you guys believe in Bigfoot? Sure. Some people did say yes, but nobody has any leads for me. So after exploring Presque Isle, it was time we move on and head towards Sherman, Maine. I got distracted on the road. It was a little bit of an ADHD moment, but it's okay, we all have those. We're just gonna go walk around and see if we see anything. And these are for camouflage. I didn't have any camo clothes. They have all the different footprints you can find. Unfortunately, they're missing a uh, Sasquatch though. So I'll find it for them, don't worry. But before I could investigate, I had a couple questions I needed to ask the author of Bigfoot in Maine, Michelle Sawyer. Oh. <laughs> As the author of the book, you must believe uh, that Bigfoot's out there. I think there's a, there is a very interesting possibility that something definitely is. I won't say believe, but I think okay. something interesting is going on that doesn't fit the list of existing Maine mammals. For sure. You wrote a lot about other people's experiences, but do you have any of your own? I have not had any any sort of eyewitness experiences. I mean, there's always weird noises in the woods. <laughs> um, so, I, so I find that to be unfortunately inconclusive. I would love to someday. I'm in a mall parking lot and they, uh, security is rolled up on me, so. I hate to interrupt, uh, but uh... <laughs> Thank you, too. Do you have any tips for looking for Bigfoot? Keep your eyes and ears open. Figure out what animals are normally in the area, and that makes it easy to eliminate noises and glimpses of things that you can accurately identify. Right. All the obvious stuff, plan ahead, know your terrain, and, and also learn how to be quiet and just sit, because that, that's when you'll see and hear things. All right, yeah. great. Thanks so much. Have a great Thanks, one. Daddy. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Now, it's time to go look for Bigfoot. This is supposed to be just for B-roll, but I think I actually might have found something. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know what's going on here. I mean, it's the size of my foot. Could that be a Bigfoot hand? I like to be skeptic about this kind of thing. I don't like to believe it too quickly. However, just in case, this little guy right here is my evidence camera. Five megapixels, four times optical zoom, and well, I don't know even what year it's from. It's probably as old as me. No freaking way. No, there's there's literally nothing. I I just thought I needed some sort of binoculars B-roll. They work though. To be honest with you, even though I was walking around, I had no idea what to look for. Like what it, what is Bigfoot evidence other than seeing Bigfoot? Is that on camera? I hope I oh, oh okay. I didn't realize the snow was this deep. Uh guys, I, I think I, I think I found something. Do you see that? Oh my god. After our first investigation of about an hour, I didn't really seem to find anything. I mean, I got some funny clips, but I was still looking for evidence, and I just couldn't really find any. So it was time to get back on the road and head towards our cabin. We're in Mars Hill. Like the planet. I don't see Mars or a hill, but it's fine. Who am I here with? Luke. Warren. Do you guys believe in Bigfoot? I don't know. Depends. It depends on what? Facts. Well, I'll tell you, I don't really believe in Bigfoot, but I heard stories of Bigfoot being up in Aroostook County. So that's why I'm here. But you guys, you don't have anything you can prove it with? I was at the top of a mountain once, and there's a couple <laughs> scary stuff that happens up there. So yeah, like, can like what? Like I Bigfoot stuff? No, I don't think it's Bigfoot. I think it's just a lot of bears. Best trick you got. Go. Don't die, though. Oh, oh. Don't worry about the <laughs>
<laughs> After a quick stop in Mars Hill, it's about time we finally go to our cabin. This is the middle of nowhere. Am I down there? Are you kidding? No way. Is that it? Are you serious? <laughs> Well, there's a tree falling in the way. Let's see if we can move the tree out of the way. Oh yeah, there's no way. Like I said, I'd never had to move a tree before to get to my Airbnb. What fit through that? I don't know. I must have literally been that close. Been that close. Home sweet home, I guess. Welcome to our humble abode for the next two nights. Well, cabin tour. We have our bed, which actively has a spider on it. Okay. We have a wood stove for heating the place. I don't have wood though. So we've got a complimentary cooler. We got a bag of charcoal and a pan. There's Literally like hair on the ground. That's disgusting. This looks like the shelf of goodies. We got Clorox, Mr. Clean, duct tape, some glass things. Are you kidding me? All right, I'm gonna close that because it stinks. All right, yeah. Now nah, that last place looked like Bigfoot was actively living in it. Did you see the hair on the ground? It was, it was the color of Bigfoot and everything. And the mice, yeah. That might have been this midnight snack for all I know. I went to go get my mic out of my car and I found a Christmas tree. It's the middle of April. Admittedly, when I planned this bit, I was supposed to be on the front stoop of a cabin in the pitch black. This does not give the same vibe uh, for scary stories for ghost telling, but actually, okay. It's time to tell you some stories. E Plantation, Aroostook County, circa 1983. Deep in the night, John woke up. Over his cousin's snoring, he heard something moving outside the tent. He lay still. A rapid sniffling sound, as if a dog was outside, came next. He thought, maybe it's a coyote. He held himself perfectly still, listening between the radio's low mumbling and his cousin's snores. In the dim glow from the bug zapper, he saw the tent fabric move as something pushed lightly on its side. What looked like a big hand grazed the fabric of the tent as the shadow moved past and then away. Eventually, the late hour got the better of him and he fell back asleep. That was one of many stories here in Aroostook County, and one of the places that we will be investigating tomorrow. And before I went to bed, I read up on our three accounts to make sure we were ready to go for tomorrow. Good morning, peeps. We got Bigfoot to find, but uh, first, I'm gonna need me a big, Breakfast. The plan. Step one, we're gonna go get breakfast. Step two, we're heading up to E Plantation, the story where the kids saw Bigfoot at his tent. We're gonna go investigate the area, see if we can find any proof of Bigfoot. Then, after that, step three, where we're heading to Green Pond. And step four, we're gonna go to Island Falls in the west branch of the Mattawamke River and see if we can get any evidence of Bigfoot. The plan is simple. Today, the mission is find proof that Bigfoot exists. McDonald's. After our McDonald's brekkie, it was time to head to E Plantation for a real investigation. And while on the way, I had a few questions. Where do Bigfoot sleep? Do they have habitats? What's their favorite food? We just turned off the main road. We're nine minutes away from East Plantation. There's a downed tree over there. It's like split in half. I'm, I'm keeping an open mind. Like it looks like like carved on. Do you see like the, the lines right there? It looks like it's been carved out on. Who knows, maybe. Maybe Bigfoot's over there whacking some like sticks on it or something. I don't really know. I'll tell you what, we're definitely in the middle of nowhere. That is for sure. This is where the hunt gets interesting. And this, my friends, is East Plantation Road. I kind of want to go up to where the road ends. Holy cow, that house is humongous. The story happened in the backyard of a family property, so I'm not gonna be able to investigate the exact spot where the sighting happened, but of course, we can kind of take a look around up here and just see if we see anything out of the ordinary. That, my friends, is a great way to get myself stuck. So, <laughs> we're gonna turn around. This is someone's property. We are truly in the middle of North. Like this is Bigfoot Central, are you kidding me? If I were a Bigfoot, I'd be living right in there. That looks cozy. I found this little clearing in the snow here, so I think we're just gonna walk down just a little ways down this path. All right, well, we got a little stream to cross. Hopefully I don't fall in the stream here. Oh, okay. 
the possibility of me running into a bear at this point is probably like a 50-50. It's basically a coin flip. <laughs> so hopefully we're just gonna keep a keen eye, look for Bigfoot, but also look for like bears, because that would be a problem. That to me looks like a boot. Yeah, probably about size 10 men's. All these footsteps, these big ones, are moose prints because we just found this. At this point, I was less scared of Bigfoot and more scared of the possibility of running into a bear or moose. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Let's get back in the car, keep driving, and maybe run into some other place we can get out and look around. I just realized I had snow pants and snow boots in my car this entire time. <laughs> I just found this like, it looks like some sort of dirt road. It's not even driven on, walked on, or anything recently. And I kind of wonder what's back there. One more quick investigation while we're here. There's some small animal tracks here. Yep, that's a moose. There's literally nothing over here. It'd be hard for me to walk through, so I imagine it'd be a little hard for Bigfoot to walk through too, but there's definitely something walking through because these little tiny trees are literally like, that looks like it was stepped on. Okay, the snow is like randomly like super deep in random spots. Maybe I should have put the snow boots on, Addison. That would've been a smart idea now, wouldn't it? <laughs> looks like E Plantation's gonna be a dud. Oh God, I just went knee deep in the snow. Okay, so apparently there's like a lake underneath me. What the frick just happened? My sock is soaked. <laughs> Look at how much water is in my sock. This might be the Bigfoot house. There's a little like lake behind it. And then all this space up here. Just because I didn't see Bigfoot and didn't get any true evidence doesn't mean that he's not there. With no luck getting any evidence from E Plantation, it was time to head to our second account in Aroostook County. And according to Michelle's book, that place was Green Pond. I took my boot off because my foot is absolutely soaked and I'm letting my dog out to air out. You know what I'm saying? The dogs are out. But this is my wet sock and I need a way to dry it. This is how we do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm crying. I'm like actually crying. I'm gonna stick my freaking dog cover out the window. Oh! Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll pull in. Green Pond is this way. Now, the tough part about that is that this way is entirely snow covered. It seems like we're not gonna be making it to Green Pond. I'm just gonna walk up the road just a little bit. Welcome to Route 11, Main Scenic Highway. Just five and a half miles up this snowy road, there's a pond called Green Pond, which, like I said, unfortunately, I cannot reach. But the story of Jeff Kane's sighting happened just there. Jeff was celebrating a day off with a fishing trip to Green Pond. A couple of hours passed. The golden silence was interrupted by two loud knocks that rang out halfway up a wooden ridge on the opposite shoreline. Jeff didn't think much of it. It was an odd sound, but not odd enough to disrupt his enjoyable afternoon for an investigation. Just after 7 p.m., out of the previously calm evening air, a giant roar came ripping toward him from the direction of his truck. The roar went on for about five seconds, long enough for all the hair on his body to stand up. As soon as it stopped, Jeff set off full speed for the shore landing. The truck was his only escape route. He hurled the float tube in the back, and once his rod landed safely with them, he drove off without a backwards glance. So that's where we are right now, on the dirt road leading up to Green Pond. I figured we can walk a little bit up the road in the area of the sighting and see if we see anything strange. What was that? I just heard a really strange noise. Whether or not it's Bigfoot, I don't care. I'm still scared. There's a lot of aggressive big predators and I do not want to be around any of them. I only had the GoPro rolling, I think. So I don't know what it was, but it was terrifying. Probably wasn't Bigfoot, but it was still terrifying. I continued walking up the road in the hopes to eventually find something. But unfortunately, it just didn't seem like Green Pond was gonna be the lucky place either. But I did have one more idea I could try. Ooh. Ooh. Well, since Bigfoot decided to end our call streak, that was really bad, we're going to our next location. But first, your boy had to stop in for some coffee. I mean, you already know I'm addicted. I'm, I'm sorry. This is so cool. I've never seen this in a grocery store. Look at this. You get to choose which K-cup you want. You know what? I'm gonna be a real white one right now. I'm good. Pumpkin spice. This is my favorite thing ever. I'm in a grocery store right now. Oh man, call me a white woman. This is the best freaking coffee I've ever had. Okay, anyway, we were back on the road to go to our final destination. If I get my car stuck here, I'm gonna have an extremely hard time getting out. Oh, I just bottomed out my car. 
Oh, we're gonna walk around a little bit right here. At this point, this is our last chance to get any sort of evidence that Bigfoot is out there on this trip. Honestly, even though I've gotten no concrete evidence myself yet, I'm starting to believe that something might be out there. According to the book right here, a dad and his son were fishing when they had a face-to-face -face encounter with Bigfoot. These trees down here are literally snapped in half. This one's freshly snapped in half, but there's no top of the tree. As Michelle had advised to me, I decided to sit here for about an hour and see if I could just sit quiet and maybe something would come to me. However, unfortunately, that didn't happen. And I'm not seeing it in this spot particularly, but this road goes a long ways that way. It's just not plowed. I think let's take a little walk, maybe dip into the woods, see if we can find anything. We got like an hour left of daylight. We just gotta see what we can find. Ooh. 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 Found a path into the woods. That's a chicken. Why is there a chicken? <laughs> As our final chance to find Bigfoot was coming to an end, it had me thinking, do I believe? Is there something out there? Oh, this might be the end of our Bigfoot journey. I guess it's time for us to head back to the car. And honestly, I'm not even sure of that answer myself anymore. At the start of all this, I thought it was pretty crazy and just folklore one might say. But as I continued to read stories, talk to people, and explore the areas myself, I think I've discovered that maybe, just maybe, there's a small chance of something else being out there. So do I believe? No, not entirely. But I'm not necessarily saying there isn't either. And I can't be the one to make your decision. You tell me, what do you believe?